Throughout history, the United States has pursued bold and ambitious fighter aircraft designs, many of which never made it past prototypes. Some were too advanced for their time, others fell victim to politics, shifting strategies or skyrocketing costs. Yet each of these cancelled aircraft projects left behind unique innovations that shaped the future of aviation. So today we'll explore 15 of the greatest American fighter aircraft that never reached deployment but could have changed history. The Vought XF-5U Flying Flapjack Designed in the closing years of the World War II, the XF-5U was an experimental naval fighter shaped like a disc. Its unique all-wing design gave it an incredible lift and near-vertical takeoff capability. Its role was to operate from short carrier decks providing agility and endurance in combat. However, the rise of pure jet fighters made the program obsolete before it could be deployed. It remains one of the most unusual cancelled fighters in U.S. aviation history. The McDonnell Douglas XP-67 The Bat The XP-67 was conceived during World War II as a high-altitude interceptor with a futuristic blended fuselage and laminar flow wings. It looked unlike any other fighter of its era, resembling a flying wing more than a conventional aircraft. Designed to be fast and sleek, its engines failed to deliver the expected performance. Its role was meant to be a long-range escort fighter to counter advanced German aircraft. The XP-55 Ascender this is a 1940s United States prototype fighter aircraft built by Curtis Wright. The XP-55 featured a cannered configuration with a rear-mounted engine and two vertical tails at end of swept wing. The concept was meant to improve maneuverability and expand aerodynamic possibilities. Its capabilities included good speed potential, but the aircraft suffered from dangerous stalls and handling issues. Despite failure, the Ascender was special for daring to explore an unconventional layout. The Northrop XP-79B Flying Ram The XP-79B was among the most unusual American interceptors which used a welded magnesium monocoque structure. Its unique purpose was to ram enemy bombers with reinforced leading edges if its cannons failed. With rocket propulsion and advanced aerodynamics, it promised blistering speeds and maneuverability. The program was immediately cancelled due to impracticality and danger. The Republic XF-91 Thunderceptor This was an interceptor that combined jet engines with rocket boosters for extreme climb rates. Its strange reverse tapered wings were designed to improve stability at supersonic speed. The aircraft could theoretically intercept high-altitude bombers quickly given it a unique role. However, its endurance was very short, and newer all-jet interceptors quickly made it obsolete. Designed in 1949, it was impressive, but impractical in real combat conditions. The program was halted after only a few prototypes were tested. The Convair F-2Y Sea Dart This was a supersonic seaplane fighter designed to take off and land on water using retractable hydro skis. It was built during the 1950s when the Navy feared losing airfields in nuclear war. With jet power, it had the capability to exceed the speed of sound while operating from oceans. However, it suffered from dangerous instability and one fatal crash that sealed its fate. Designed in 1953, it was cancelled after only a handful were tested. What makes the Sea Dart special is that it remains the only supersonic seaplane fighter ever built. The Lockheed YF-12 This was a Mach 3 interceptor derived from the A-12 spy plane, making it the fastest fighter ever flown. It could intercept bombers at extreme speed and altitude. Designed in the early 1960s, only three prototypes were ever built before cancellation in 1968, primarily because of high costs and also the Air Force, favorite versatility over speed. What makes the IF-12 special is that it set records for speed and altitude, some still unbeaten. 
It directly influenced the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, the XF-108 Rapier. This was conceived as a Mark III long-range interceptor to escort the XB-70 Valkyrie bomber. With cutting-edge radar and AIM-47 missiles, it was far ahead of its time. Designed in the 1950s, its role was to stop Soviet bombers before they reached American airspace. However, costs skyrocketed, and the growing focus on missiles made it unnecessary. Therefore, it was cancelled. What makes the Rapier special was its extraordinary range and speed, which could have made it a dominant interceptor. The Bell XF-109 This was a vertical takeoff and landing supersonic fighter concept. It featured eight lift jets for vertical ascent and main engines for high-speed horizontal flight. Designed in the early 1960s, it was meant to solve the Navy's VTOL needs. However, the complexity and inefficiency of eight separate engines made it impractical. The program was cancelled before a prototype could be built. What makes the XF-109 special is that it was one of the most ambitious VTOL fighter projects ever conceived. The Douglas F-60 Missileer This was designed in 1960 as a fleet defense fighter with extreme loiter time. It would cruise slowly over the ocean, waiting to launch long-range missiles at incoming bombers. Its capabilities centered on range and endurance rather than speed or agility. However, it was deemed too vulnerable to enemy fighters and the Navy chose the faster F-4 Phantom II instead. The program was cancelled, but what makes the missile air special is that it anticipated the concept of modern airborne missile carriers. The Northrop YF-17 Cobra This was a lightweight twin-engine fighter designed in the 1970s. Competing against the YF-16, it lost out due to cost and performance considerations. However, it caught the Navy's attention and was adapted into the F-A-18 Hornet. Its role as the prototype of a successful naval fighter gives it an endearing legacy. What makes the YF-17 special is how a losing design became the foundation of one of America's most famous fighters. The Rockwell XFV-12 The XFV-12 was a supersonic VTOL fighter designed for the US Navy in the late 1970s. It used thrust augmented wings to redirect engine exhaust for vertical lift. In theory, it could have combined supersonic speed and carrier-based vertical takeoff. However, testing showed it could not generate enough thrust to get airborne vertically. Cancelled before proving itself, it became another dead end in VTOL development. The McDonnell Douglas General Dynamics A-12 Avenger II This was a stealthy flying wing stealth attack fighter designed for carriers. Conceived in the late 1980s, it aimed to replace the A-6 intruder with advanced radar evading features. Its capabilities promised precision strike missions with stealth similar to the B-2 bomber. However, due to high cost and delays crippled the program. It never flew, but its lessons influenced later stealth aircraft, including F-35. The Northrop YF-23 Black Widow II The YF-23 was America's stealthy challenger designed during the Cold War's final days. Sleek, fast, and highly stealthy, it was in direct competition with Lockheed's YF-22. It offered superior stealth and range, while the YF-22 emphasized agility. Despite its advantages, it lost to the YF-22 due to political and industrial reasons. The YF-23 was cancelled in 1991 after only two prototypes. What makes it special is its futuristic look and unmatched stealth profile, still admired today. Many believe the YF-23 was a better fighter that lost for reasons beyond performance. If it had been chosen, it might have still dominated the skies today. Boeing X-32 the X-32 was a concept demonstrator aircraft that was designed for the Joint Strike Fighter Competition. With stealth shaping advanced avionics and vertical takeoff variants, it was a serious competitor. Its role was to become a multi-service fighter for the Air Force, Navy, and Marines. However, 
Its ungainly design and performance shortfalls caused it to lose to Lockheed's X-35 demonstrator, which was further developed into the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. Cancelled in 2001, it marked Boeing's last major attempt at a frontline fighter. What makes the X-32 special is that it came within a step of becoming the F-35. Instead, it remains a symbol of almost but not quite success. With this, the buzz is signing off for today. But stay tuned guys, we'll see you guys again with more interesting videos from the world of military. Until then, bye-bye.